This meeting is being recorded. Yeah, now we got it. Cool. All right, Lydia, thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for being on Power Network TV. And um, so honoring little girl in you, what is that? Um, what does that look like? So when I asked you and, and you said, well, I'm stepping, you know, more of my voice, bigger stages. What do you mean yeah. by that? What's going on? Yeah. Well, you know, as we as we navigate through, you know, the the ups and downs, the pivotal moments in our life and, and just life in general, you know, we we end up inevitably coming back to what lit us up as a little kid, right? What were those things we like to do? We always hear about bringing play into your life or whatever, or, you know, what were those creative outlets that we tapped into? What was it that we really loved to do when, you know, we had no responsibilities and just could fill our hours with something that made us feel, you know, who, you know, great and, and lively and, and authentic. So as a little girl, I always had this idea, this notion that I wanted to be using my voice from a stage but I was really, really shy. So I never really let that be known to too many people outside of my circle. I would spend hours in my parents' basement singing in front of a mirror, pretending I was some great big singer on a stage, you know, but really keeping that, that uh, songstress to myself. But it was always in me, Amos, you know, all through school. And the funny thing was, is that I would have opportunities to use my voice. I was terrified, but I would get up and do it. And somehow it was met with a lot of enthusiasm um, and openness. And it would, you know, I'd get, you know, awarded for it, whether it was speech making in school or later in my career as a dietitian, I got to work in media. You know, I was a faculty member at the University of, you know, Metropolitan Toronto University, where I actually did my undergrad. I taught there. So I always had a captive audience. And the more and more I got to use my voice, the more comfortable I became with it. And I knew that this was where I wanted to be. And I felt like, okay, okay, this all makes sense. You know, it's channeling that little inner girl in you. But over time, you know, I, I ended up, not ended up, I think it's something many of us go through somewhere in our early to mid forties, maybe where we start to go through that midlife, you know, what is the bigger meaning to my life? What is my purpose? Why am I here? You know, I knew there was more and I, I actually joked about it. I coined myself a midlife wife. You know, I had this beautiful life, but you know, something was missing on the inside and I knew I had this inkling to use my voice, but I felt there was a more important message that I needed to be sharing outside of my professional world as a dietitian. So fast forward and you know, I just, my whole journey has shown me how the universe, when you open yourself up to it, the opportunities present themselves for you. And this doesn't sound like a, a feel good story that I'm about to share, but it really, I see all the dots connecting, you know, based on where I'm at today. So I'm having this midlife wife restlessness thing going on, knowing I have a bigger message I wanna share. And I'm telling my husband about it. And he said, just figure it out. Do what makes you happy. You know, like you've got the world is your oyster. <laughs> you know, you've got this great life. Anyway, the long and the short of it was in a very short period of time, I, I ended up experiencing some really pivotal life moments. One of which was losing him to sudden death 10 years ago. He died very unexpectedly. And I had this epiphanous moment after he died of rather than sitting in my grief I found gratitude very soon after he passed away. I could look at what my life had been, what our experiences had been together and find the grace in it and know that this was meant to happen for me at this specific time, because to be able to find gratitude in the face of pain was a bit of an awakening for me to something bigger than me. I didn't want to name it. I didn't want to say what it was, but I knew that it was a calling for me to say, Hey, wake up, pay attention and just start living your life more fully. Like just open your heart to what's out there for you. So that was the, the steps I started to take to navigate my grief and to just pay attention to what I felt was working with me through this journey. And it led me to a place where I just started bringing practices into my life that really nurtured my well-being, helped me to find peace, not just with what I experienced, but just peace inside. And I think finding that inner peace felt like a missing piece in the answer to the restlessness of, you know, what's my bigger why? And I realized, you know what, you got to pay attention to that calling to use your voice, but now you know what your message is. Your message is to inspire, encourage, motivate other people to do the deep dive inward for themselves so that they can empower themselves to live a life that feels authentic and true to who they are, which is how I, I, this brand of discovering you came to be because discovering you is your own uniqueness. So who are you? What do you need to do to bring practices into your life that ground you, nurture you, help you find your peace? allow you to feel really rooted in who you are so that you can turn around and, and 
be in service of others because you're coming from a place of true authenticity. So it's been a really beautiful journey. And there's been many, many, you know, episodic things that have happened in my life in the 10 years following that have also just been those step back moments and, you know, where I've asked myself, what is the bigger meaning? But I've always approached my life by what is this meant to teach me? How am I meant to grow from this experience? And then what can I take from my learnings and share? And that's why I speak from the state and I, I do workshops and I just try and help other people find what I found for myself because it really is, life is just beautiful and it really, it's, it's meant to teach you more about yourself and help you to grow more fully into who you are. Why did you develop this mindset? Well, because a lot of us, okay, so I'm speaking for myself. I had a victim mindset that woe is me, poor me. How did you, who taught you to think that way? I'm going to go on a limb here and just say it was the grace of God because I've always had the ability and and I'm going to go a little bit further back to the little girl, maybe not the little girl swinging from a stage, but you know, my husband died 10 years ago. My dad died 30 years ago and you know, very different circumstances, but through that experience, he was, he was diagnosed with an illness. It was a very short term window, but we got to spend a lot of time together. And I remember thinking, after he passed away, I'm so grateful that we had all this time together. So I think gratitude has always just been something that's in my fiber. Um, and, and I feel very blessed to be able to say that, that I have that positive, I call it my silver lining mindset, being able to, to find the silver lining, you know, behind that dark cloud, because it really does allow you to just open your heart to what might be next. It doesn't change the grief journey. Like I'm not sugarcoating this at all, Amos, to say that all of these experiences weren't really, really hard. They are, but I've always been able to take this dark moment and say, okay, but what's the flip side to that? You know, why do I feel as hard as sad as I do? Why is my heart so heavy? Because it's experienced this much love. So I can always, you know, do the yin and the yang. And I think, you know, when you can balance that off and, and just, if nothing else, recognize that when you're in that dark place, you're in that dark place because you also know what the flip side of feeling the joy feels like too, right? So recognizing that this is a temporary moment in time, this is a temporary moment in time, but one balances off the other and you will make your way through. And the more that we do things that empower ourselves that way and align with who we are and do the things that make us feel good, because it really is a lot about energy and how we feel, um, then we become stronger and stronger and stronger. And it's like a muscle, right? We have to work it. We have to keep bringing those things into our lives that that nurture our well-being. And all of a sudden, you know, we find ourselves in a situation. And this is 10 years in the making for me. So I'm not sitting here on the stage saying, oh, you know, it just happened. Gratitude was that impetus for me to say, what's happening here in my life? There's a bigger thing. So let's work on connecting to that. And then bringing practices in that allowed me to connect more fully and just develop that muscle. And over time, you know, it lands you in a place where you really feel that you're in a position to be in service of others, because now, you know, you've, you've done the journey, you've done the walk and you've done the work. Yeah. You jumped, you faced it yourself and now you're qualified. So now you're stepping into new stages. When we first got on, you said honoring the little girl in me. So you're, you know, young little kid downstairs, three hours a day, pretending you're on stage speaking. What, Mm -hmm. what has the journey been like the last year or two or three as you're, you're wanting to honor that and step on stages what stage is why yeah well you know what I think that that's also been a part of the challenge and I'm really glad you asked the question because the desire and the knowingness was always there yeah need to go out and use the voice but who is my audience because that always becomes the big question who's your audience what is your message and my response to that whenever the question were at questions were asked was my audience is my my audience is really everyone because this message is applicable to everybody. It's the midlife wife, it's the widow, it's the divorcee, it's the person who's just going through the difficulties of the empty nest or the retiree. It's all these people who are navigating pivotal life moments where they're looking inward and saying, "What is my bigger purpose? Or what's my now? Or what's my why?" It's when you're trying to figure out who you are through all of these pivotal life moments. That's who my audience is. So that's a lot of people. <laughs> However. You know, and I, and I allowed myself to ruminate on that. So I would speak to various audiences and I started, I started the easy way when I started doing keynotes, it was within my former industry of, of being a dietitian and nutritionist. So I would speak to, you know, I speak at conferences that were centered around people in that world, because that was just an easy network for me to get into. But now I'm diving into the widowed community, which is a perfect, you know, fit for me. I'm speaking quite a bit to people in the widowed community. Um, as well as just, you know, women's groups, women who are really looking to 
figure out what more is there for me now, now that my kids have flown the nest, now that, you know, I've retired now that whatever, or, or now that nothing, now that I just have more time to focus on me, who am I? That's a, who am I? Like that, that question right there, we could go many, many places because it's not just, it's who am I? It's, it's how do I even reference myself? What do I choose to believe? defines me because you could say what I do or what I think or what I feel defines me what my parents told me what you told yourself at six years old so how are you defining who are you now at 55 okay so I have two ways to answer that question one it one is a more uh technical getting into that the how of how do we figure this out and I I use a strategy and it's something I did on my own journey is recognizing that maybe some of the things I've valued previously or some of the things that were taught to me growing up, some stick, but some don't based on my own life's journey. So revisiting what you align with in terms of your values. So I'm going to use the example of myself. Health and well-being was always a core value of mine. As a dietitian, I walked the talk. When I went through all of these emotional you know, moments, these pivotal life moments, I realized the value in nourishing my inner well-being. So I started bringing in the, the practices that nurtured my spirit, that nurtured my, you know, my heart, my mind, my soul, everything. So that, that scope of that value became a lot bigger. It became practicing a holistic module of well-being versus just physical. So that was, you know, me growing into a, a bigger practice, something I valued, but expanding on that value. Connection was always a huge value. I think that's why I felt drawn to use my voice, connecting with people. But then I, when I had this aha moment of feeling gratitude in this, in this darkest point in my life, to me, that connected me to something bigger than me that I couldn't see. So the connection piece expanded. So I connect to something that I can't see, but that's inherently inside of me, which is my inner spirit. I call it my inner spirit, my essence, whatever you want to call it. So fostering that connection, creating impact is something that's just become a huge value of mine, making sure that I, I'm in service of others, because I know now that's why I'm here. So these are the things I value at this point in my life. So that's how I, I stay true to who I am. But a simpler way to reference that point, and it's something, ironically, my late husband used to say to me, and I say this sometimes as a joke, but it's always met with enthusiasm. When people say, well, what do you do? I say, whatever makes me happy. That's what I do. Because if you do whatever makes you happy, you're honoring who you are. And I don't mean that in a flippant way of being reckless or careless, but if you're bringing those things into your life that really make you feel like you on, on the regular, and again, you work that muscle, then that's who you are. You don't have to define it by a title or by a, a personality trait or, you know, or, you know, anything at all. You just do, who are you? You know, what do you do? I do what makes me happy every single day. Or, you know, what are you working on right now? Myself. And it's a work in progress. It's, you know, nothing wrong with saying that. Uh, people here, a few key people in this network keep telling me that they're like, do what makes you happy, do what makes you happy. And that's what you should be doing. And it, why does that hit me as selfish and wrong? What, why do I have that? Oh, you shouldn't be too happy or else you might be selfish. What is that come from? Where does that come? From? That's pre-programmed. And I, and I, you know, I, I don't know your backstory. I only know my own backstory. I think those, those ideas are programmed in our minds that we're not allowed to give ourselves permission to be happy. And I will say, that's why I'm so grateful for the 20 years I had with the man I was married to, because that was his tagline, do what makes you happy. And he would follow it up by saying, because if you're not happy, nobody else is, right? Like we all feel the effects of that. So we want you to be happy, whatever that looks like for you. And I thought that was a very selfless thing to say, but it was, it was, you know, the best advice I ever, I ever got. And so I made a point of saying, yeah, make sure I do something. Not every moment of every day is going to be happy. You're going to have your ups and downs. You're going to wake up days feeling off, days feeling better. But again, if you can bring things into your life that, that are easy enough to incorporate into your day-to-day, -day, that make you feel good, you know, set your day on the right foot. You don't know what's going to happen throughout the day, but at least you set yourself in the right frame of mind to start. And then you know that that's there again for you tomorrow to revisit and, you know, to start that day off again on a good foot. So, you know, doing what makes you happy. I, I honestly think, again, if you're not in a good space, then nobody else, knew. there's a trickle effect, right? So people, and, and yes, you've probably been criticized. I've been criticized for, you're, you're so positive. You just make it seem so easy. And I said, it's, it's a work in progress and it's a conscientious effort. And I'm not gonna apologize for it because I put the, the time and the effort in to, to make sure that I, I know what makes me happy.
and to bring as much of that into my life as I can. Okay, so then I'm going to ask you then, what makes you happy? Like, do you have favorite activities, favorite foods, favorite, what do you do to keep yourself happy? Well, I'm, I'm active, you know, I'm, I'm a very active person physically, you know, again, I still walk the talk, you know, 25 years as a registered dietitian, it just doesn't fall by the wayside. I'm not technically practicing in that area anymore, but I have a little tagline that I've been using. I use it all the time in my speeches and people just love it. I talk about, you know, when you do this whole deep dive into discovering who you are and I say, there's nothing more nourishing and delicious than knowing who you are. And it's true. And when I say that, you know, it's referencing those things that you have to bring into your life that really nourish you as a person. So whatever for me, it's, it's being active, it's eating well, it's connection. You know, I'm very lucky that I have three daughters. So we're a very girly family and we're very close, you know, they're close in age and we're a very close family. So I get a lot of time with them and that social connection, that connection. I mean, connection is a fundamental human need and that's a huge one. And we all need that. And, you know, there's statistics and and research to support that, you know, people who get lost in unhealthy living practices, let's just say, it's often because they're disconnected from themselves and disconnected to the rest of the world. So the more connection that we can establish, you know, with the people in our lives and with ourselves, you know, the healthier we are, the more whole we are. Wow. Okay. So what does it look like? Um, you know, you're speaking, you're learning to step up on bigger stages. Are you, are you doing the coaching stuff too? Are you writing books? What's going on there? I have, uh, I've been a contributing author in a compilation book that was actually ironically called Ignite Your Inner Spirit. So it was very, very fitting for my journey. And that was actually back in 2020 or 21 that I was, I was authored in that book. I haven't written my own yet, although I'm not going to lie. I have hundreds of pages and probably several books in my back closet because I journal every day. That's another one of my practices that I, I do. So journaling is just something I open my eyes. I get the pen to paper and, you know, it can be, it can be a dear diary type of entry, or it can be this morning. I woke up feeling this, or it can just be today. I'm grateful for it's any number of things, but there's just so much, you know, that really is just Lydia on the page. So it's a place to put my thoughts before I start my day. Um, So yes, I have written, I have spoken from numerous stages over COVID. I did a ton of podcasting. Uh, My next big stage will be in the new year in the spring for uh, a lovely large hospice community in the States. Actually, I'll be speaking for them at an annual luncheon they have. And that's beautiful. They just said, can you please give us a a talk on hope after loss? I said, I sure can. I know all about that. So, you know, they, uh, they just want to help. I think you know, definitely when you're going through the tough stuff, when you're facing, you know, the loss of a partner, you want to know what does this mean to me and who am I going to be after it? But I think, you know, it doesn't have to be confined to these really big moments. Like I say, I just happen to go through these and that's how I I did the work. But I think there's a lot of people out there who really just want to have a better handle on who they are and just feel strong in themselves every day when they get up to, to face a new day. Who doesn't want that, right? So who doesn't want that? That's the Holy grail, you know? And, and so if I can just say this, you know, for me, all of this started, you know, with my dad way back, looking back, but, you know, with the loss of my husband, you know, just feeling that gratitude. And, you know, I just feel that gratitude is, is this word that people say, oh yeah, gratitude, schmatitude, you know, we hear about all the time, but I don't think it's a suggestion. I think it's a prescription for living a really fulfilling life because when you're grateful, you're present and you can't be, you can't be experiencing negative emotions when you're feeling gratitude. You know, you're not feeling anxiety or depression when you're gratitude, you're really, when you're grateful, you're really present with where you're at and you're living from an expansive heart. And that's when the opportunities just start to flood in and, you know, present themselves to you. So I can't emphasize enough the power of a grateful mindset or just practicing that gratitude muscle as often as you can. Wow. You've heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. Lydia Noor, thanks for being on Empower Network TV. And uh, this, I really appreciate you saying the things you said today. I needed this reminder for me. So awesome. Well, I'm so happy to, uh, to have had a, a place on your show. I love the work you're doing. I think I, I just think you are empowering so many people and I'm grateful for you, Amos. Thank you for this. Oh, thank you. It's been my pleasure. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm glad we finally got to do this. We were talking about this for a few months and it finally happened and here we are. And um, who are you looking to connect with then in this community? So people watching this, how do they know if they should reach out to you? Because uh, you're going to be tagged in this. Put all your links in the comments after. Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, 
you know, it depends on whether we're just doing this on a, you know, I'm, I'm happy to connect with everyone in your community just to do what you and I just did here. Because to me, the greatest gift I receive from having a conversation with somebody is just to see the eyes light up and that moment of, ah, aha, you know what, I, I can, I can put some of these things in place for myself too. To me, my greatest motivator is to be in service of others. Obviously, you know, in a, in a bigger setting, I, I'm speaking on stages, you know, getting paid for, for giving, you know, proper keynotes and addresses that, you know, with tangible takeaways and tools that people can, you know, use in their lives. But it's very much rooted in just creating impact, you know, and whether that's one person at a time or from a stage, it's, it's all equally joyful and fulfilling for my heart to do that. Well, thank you for being here, Lydia. You're a real joy this morning. Well, morning, mountain time anyway, at 10 a.m. almost. Thanks for being in the community. And um, oh yeah, I I can get you on a, a first date networking event. I don't know if I mentioned that to you, but we have one Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern. There's another one Tuesday evening, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. So if you want to be on either of those, let me know, I'd get you on. I'd love to. Yeah, I just, I'd, yeah, I'd love to uh, just shoot me a quick little note and let me, Give me the deets on the dates and I will definitely tap into one of them for sure. Awesome. Uh, if you've been okay. watching, listening to Empower Network TV today, Lydia Noor has been gracing us with uh, wisdom. So if you have appreciated her like I have, please reach out to her. She'd love to connect with you. She'll be tagged in this post. Uh, she may put some links in the comments. Look for those if she does. Thanks, Lydia. And I'll be uh, chatting with you soon. Okay, Amos. Thank you for your day. Bye.